Welcome 2100. We're going to do Newton's second law today. It's a fun lab and I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. Let me say a few words though about uh, the equipment that you would typically use versus what we're going to use in the lab today. And the reason being is so that there's no confusion because of course your lab manual is going to make reference to the equipment uh, that would typically be set up in the classroom at Cal State LA and that is the air track. So you have a rider on this air track with a piece of string attached to it. Now that string goes over what they call a smart pulley. And on the other end of that string is a hook with mass on it. So you release the mass, the string dry or imparts uh, a force on your rider and uh, pulls it forward. Now there is a photo gate uh, sensor set up to the smart pulley and it tracks the motion of the pulley spokes. So what the software does is it translates that uh, motion of the pulley into the linear motion of your cart. So you get a nice graph of velocity versus time for this lab. And what you're supposed to do is determine the slope of that velocity versus time graph so you could determine the acceleration of that particular run. And that's the data of interest in these runs for you is the uh, acceleration. Now, we are going to acquire that graph differently. We don't need a smart pulley, but well, we're just gonna acquire that data in the normal fashion like we have been doing. The software just picks up the motion of that cart's wheels and translates that into linear motion. So that doesn't affect you at all. It's the same data. It's, it's, it's just obtained in a different fashion. Another difference would be uh, the types of weights that we are using. Your lab manual says get five 20 gram weights, uh, put one 20 gram weight on the hook, for instance, for part one. Put the other four, uh, four 20 gram weights on your rider and do a run. Release the hook or uh, release the mass on the string on the hook and it falls to the ground, drives your rider across the air track and uh, that would be the data for uh, run one of part one. Then what you do is you grab one of the masses on top of your cart, one of those 20 gram masses, and put it on the hook. Set it in motion again, that's your run number two. Well, we're gonna use 10 gram masses, five 10 gram masses instead of five 20 gram masses. So that's the only difference. And the reason being is because I started with the 20 gram masses just to be consistent with your lab manual, but after the third run, my smart cart flew off the track. It was, it was going too fast, too much weight. So if I was to continue with the 20 gram um, masses, uh, we've, we would have broken the equipment before we got to the end of the experiment. So we're using, we are using 10 gram masses. By the way, all of this data, um, providing it to you, and it, it's all tabulated. It, so, you know, there's, there's no reason to record uh, these masses while you watch me do the experiment momentarily. It, it, it'll be provided to you. Um, I am going to give you that velocity versus time plot for each run. And I also did a linear fit for each of those um, runs. So you'll be able to get the acceleration. Oh, by the way, for good measure, I threw in position versus time, as well as velocity versus time. I mean, if you want, just totally ignore the position versus time. But I thought um, you, you should, I mean, why not? You should have a sense of what the position versus time curve looks like for a particular velocity versus time uh, graph. So it's, it, it, I thought it'd be beneficial. So you're going to get that in your data sheet and you're also going to get, um, let's see, what else? Mm, if I think of it, I'll bring it up during the video but um, I can't think of what else you'll need right now. You'll have the specific weights for each run, of course. Um, part two, the lab manual instructs you to use different riders for, um, for your five different runs because of course, if you read the lab manual already, you are altering the 
met your capital M, which they're calling the master of the rider, you, you are altering that. And the way you do that is in some cases you stack masses on your rider. Um, and in other cases, you're just going to use an entirely different rider altogether. But uh, bottom line is you want five different masses for your rider for the second part. And what, what we're going to do is use the same card with just different masses um, stacked on top of it. Well, obviously, because the Pasco smart card system only has one card. So, uh, but yeah, that's no problem. Uh, we'll just alter its mass that way. So let me put you on pause and let's do this experiment. Okay, here's our familiar Pasco smart card and the track. It's already been leveled. I have a string attached to the smart card. On the other end of the string is indeed a hook with some weight on it. And, uh, oh, by the way, if you were to do this in the lab, usually it takes the students the whole class period. A lot of things come up and, and uh, you have to repeat runs. So, hey, we're gonna knock this out in a couple of minutes. So, um, consider yourselves lucky. For instance, uh, sometimes uh, you'll get a bad looking graph. Uh, students uh, didn't realize that uh, this hook was swinging. Why would that matter, by the way, if this hook is swinging or not? Um, the answer lies in, but just bear that in mind when you get to this section in your lecture that deals with a uh, pendulum. Um, yeah, the forces and constant and sinusoidal. Another uh, pitfall students tend to fall into is that they do their runs. And by the way, a lot is going on while you do this run. Weights are falling off and, 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 and um, uh, there's just a lot of motion, a lot going on with those air tracks and this string sometimes falls off the pulley. So students will be doing multiple runs where this string is on the axle of the pulley and that creates too much uh, friction. So you don't get good data. But anyway, we're gonna avoid, uh, I mean, I can go on and on, but we're gonna avoid all those pitfalls and just knock it out. So I have a 10 gram weight on that hook. By the way, the hook is five grams. And again, all of this will be tabulated for you. I have one, two, three, four, four, 10 gram weights on this smart card that is, I want to say 271 grams, and I'm going to set it into motion. So here we go. There you go. I'm going to get that data and analyze it for you. <clears throat> what I just did was I transferred one of those 10 gram weights onto the hook, and I'm going to set this in motion again. So here is our run. Number two. Now I just transferred another one of those 10 gram weights onto our hook. I put the string on the pulley, it slipped off and was around its axle, and we'll get our run number three, which is that right there. So, by the way, um, I'm recording this data. So, this is the data that you will indeed be analyzing and I'm gonna give you nice looking graphs. So it's gonna be very easy. This is run number, what are, what are we on, four? So this jumped off the track after it hit the edge here, but that doesn't concern us because the data that I'm collecting and giving you, um, I mean, it will include that little collision, but I'm cutting that off. I'm cutting that off and that won't be part of your graph. And here is the last run, run number five. So um, here we go. We just did part one. Let me put you on pause and we'll do part two. Okay, here we go with part two. By the way, I would love to talk about Newton's second law, uh, the theor theoretical aspects of this lab. But as you can see, all I am doing is just talking about this, the mechanics of doing uh, the experiment um, or giving you information about how I'm sending you this data so that you can make sense of it. Oh, with that said, for each part, you have five runs. So for each part, you're gonna have five graphs. Now, uh, when I give you the data, you will notice that um, the five runs are all plotted on one graph, and that's done for a couple of reasons. One, well, 
uh, to save space? Why send you a data sheet that's like 12 pages long as opposed to two? But more importantly, I like it all in one graph so that you could compare the different runs if you choose to. Uh, just a visual of um, uh, how they differ from each other. Uh, so uh, also, each, um, each curve on that graph is not labeled, but there is a key or legend. And on that legend, it says run one, then two, then three, then four, then five. And that legend is color coded. So that's how you match up. I mean, you'd figure it out anyway, right? <clears throat> I mean, it would have been nice to have explicitly labeled each curve as to which run it is, but you'll just have to go off color. So here's part two. And what I have is two 10 gram weights on this hook. So that's a total of what, uh, 25 grams on, the, on this end of the string. And all I have is just uh, the card here, which like I said, is 271 grams. So this is run number one for part two, or the way you'll see it in the data that I'm providing to you is, um, well, the, the, there's a table for part two and it says run one, but in the graphs, There'll be a graph for part two and it says run six. So that is your first run for the second part. Now, what we wanna do is alter the mass of this card. So what I'm gonna do is put a 100 gram weight on it. So I've just increased the weight of the rider or in this case, the cart and here is your second run for part two. Now what I'm going to do is increase the weight even further. I will put another um, 100 gram mass on that cart and I am keeping the mass on the hook constant as instructed in your lab manual. So I anticipate a bunch of masses flying all over the place. Let's see how it goes. This is run number three. Okay. We are now doing run number four. I am placing a 200 gram mass on this cart. Here we go. Now we're ready for your last run. And by the way, students, as I mentioned before, this would usually take at a minimum an hour and a half for you to do all of these runs. And we knocked it out rather quickly, so good for us. I just added 50 grams to this cart. And again, if I went too quick for you, or if you didn't have the chance to write it down, it's all tabulated for you. Last run. We're done. See you next week.